I wanted a space mouse, but even the most basic option is not exactly cheap. Here is a do-it-yourself open source version that you can make for $20 worth of parts. Today I'll tell you how it came to be and how to make your own step by step. Hey, I'm doing another survey on what the community actually wants in a 3D printer. Please have your say and click the link at the top of the description. My patron Derek got a space mouse some time ago and he seems pretty happy with his purchase. I do a lot of CAD and I was pretty sure I wanted one too, but it's a lot of money to spend on a maybe. In the ultimate try before you buy, here we have a do-it-yourself version that emulates a real thing, but for a fraction of the price. It was quite a journey in getting here, so let me get you up to speed. Firstly, what is a space mouse? It's a product by a company called 3D Connection. And in summary, it's an input device for your computer that works on top of your regular mouse. The key point in all models is this joystick with six degrees of freedom. Typically, this is used with 3D design or cam software to manipulate the camera and the higher end models have programmable buttons that you can map to hotkeys within that software. The function is best showed with the demonstration video from 3D Connection. You move the joystick like you would move the object. It should be intuitive and smooth to use. I do a lot of CAD and I want one, but do I want to spend this much money? And this is just the basic model. The price really escalates once we get to the more advanced ones. Ideally, I'd like to try before I buy. So I looked up what was available that I could make myself. Well, there was a lot of accessories for the space mouse, but also some complete do-it-yourself solutions. Here's three of note that I really liked. The first being the OS3M mouse by Colton Baldridge. This one uses eddy currents, kind of like the beacon scanner. And as we can see from the demonstration, it seems to function quite well. Ultimately, I didn't make this one because I didn't want to manufacture the PCB. Secondly, we have the Orbion by FAQ Totem. This is pretty fancy looking with the display in the front, but I decided not to proceed here because of the complexity and all of the parts required. For someone else with more patience, it looks to be a very well documented project. Ultimately, the version I went for was this Space Mushroom by Shiura. And what drew me to this was the simplicity and how easily it looked to modify for my needs. To make it, all we need is a small Arduino module and three analog joysticks like you'd find in a gamepad. And clearly it worked based on the demo video, in Blender at least. For around 20 bucks, I had a fun project that I could do a trial run with. And things started well, but soon I run into issues which would need a lot of time to fix. I already had the Arduino on hand. So next I purchased some joysticks locally. The only problem was they had a different form factor and orientation for each axis. I found that the printed ball joints didn't really fit the shafts properly and the retaining screw stopped the full range of motion in one direction. So I imported the STL into CAD, rebuilt it from scratch with some modifications, specifically by drilling a hole through the shaft and inserting a small screw that would sit flush and allow full range of motion. But the footprint for the joystick was different as well, so I imported the STL and once again created a modified version to suit what I had. This allowed me to get everything assembled finally, make up a wiring loom to suit, plug everything in and flush the firmware. And it didn't work. Some of the movements produced nothing, and the ones that did work worked in the complete wrong direction. The standard firmware emulates a mouse and a keyboard together to suit whatever your cat needs for panning, orbiting and zooming. And that means if something's mixed up, random inputs are going to be sent and you're going to have random results. Very frustrating. To cut a long story short, the firmware takes X and Y inputs from the three joysticks, puts them through this transformation matrix to convert them as necessary and I figured I had the order of those inputs wrong. In total, there were 48 permutations for how the X and Y axes could be plugged in for each set of positions the three joysticks could be plugged in. And I started to work through these but was getting absolutely nowhere. I then discovered the project was also posted on Instructables and also on Thingiverse where users had made some valuable contributions. Jay Fador had posted some code and this made the Arduino emulate a real three connection space mouse. Only trouble was the loop section was completely empty. But on Instructables, Benny B. Walker had taken that code and mashed the old and new together to flush it all out. They also provided further instructions for setting up Arduino to emulate the real space mouse. The emulation aspect worked perfectly, but the direction of movement was still all jumbled up. I then explored this interesting remix by FD Makara on Thingiverse. The big difference here was that four joysticks instead of three were used, and that meant that the maths in the Arduino sketch was greatly simplified without a transformation matrix. 
The only problem was it used the joystick library instead of the HID one. So I spent a considerable amount of time combining all of these different portions of code together, including adding five levels of debugging, allowing me to understand and rewrite the functions to get all of the axes going in the right direction, and the ability to invert each axis as well as change the speed. I also redesigned some other parts to better suit my tastes, and then, inspired by this UFO style remix by 3D Tombud, designed a similar enclosure with a different style knob. And now finally, everything works as it should. I have six degrees of freedom to manipulate the camera, and this do-it-yourself version convinces the 3D connection software that it's legit, so we have complete customization for each axis per program. Therefore, this is fully supported by any software the official Space Mouse would be. I've successfully tested with Onshape, Fusion 360, Orca Slicer, Photoshop, and you can even use it to scroll up and down in your web browser if you're so inclined. I've put a lot of hours into this, and I'm sure the same goes for those whose work I've built upon, so thanks very much to them. All of the parts, code, and instructions are published to Thingiverse, so assuming that you want to make one, here's the step-by-step -step guide. All of the parts and hardware are listed on printables, but here are the highlights. The Arduino board is only around six or seven dollars, just make sure it's got that at Mega 32U4. For the joysticks, you want the version on the right with the four mounting holes, as that will match all of the STLs. I've got the right ones linked for Amazon and eBay Australia. Most other stuff you'll probably already have. There's a small amount of fasteners, a USB cable that matches the Arduino, a crimping tool and a DuPont connector kit, and if you want to use the optional LEDs, I've got a link to a roll where you can cut off the right length segment. In terms of printed parts, I've divided them into categories. And filament choice, by the way, is completely up to you. The parts you're seeing here are the core parts that need printing no matter what. This shaft piece is unmodified from FD Makara, and you'll need support for the underside. And then there's my variation of the ball joint. Make sure you print these with a brim to keep them attached. And then we have an option, the first being a two-part space mushroom design. If you use this, you can complement it with the other parts from FD Makara as well as the other remixes. And option B is to print all of my dome parts. These are a system and are designed to all work together. Whichever of these options you choose, I've got some thin false floors that'll need drilling or breaking through before you can continue. Let's start by assembling the core parts. And if we need to, we can remove the top from each joystick, place a ball joint on top, which should be a nice snug fit. We'll then rotate it to reveal the smaller of the two holes. We can use this as a guide to drill through with a two millimeter drill bit. Hopefully you manage to get your hole right in the middle for maximum strength. We can then secure the ball joint in place by using the small self-tapping screw, inserting it from the side with the larger hole. This should sit flush and therefore allow the joystick to have the full range of motion. We then repeat this step until we have all four. Each joystick is then inserted onto the shaft and they slide down from the top. A little protrusion holds one of the holes in place and then we use another self-tapping screw to secure the other. If you're looking for a more perfect fit to get rid of these gaps, you can consider filing the edges of the joystick PCB to create a little more clearance. We repeat this until all four joysticks are mounted to the shaft. Time for the wiring, and if you haven't done this before or aren't confident, I've got a dedicated video linked below in the description. Here is the complete wiring diagram, and it looks way more complicated than it is. For instance, we have five volts coming out of the raw pin, and then splitting five ways to go to each of the four joysticks, and then to the LED strip. As you might have guessed, we then have exactly the same thing for the ground wires. Beyond that, for each joystick, there's a set of wires, one for X and one for Y. And all of this adds up to the completed loom. Here's what the loom looks like when it's done, and yes, I made mine a little bit long. We can see our five volts and our ground coming out of the Arduino. Each of those then split into five different wires. And for each joystick, there's a plug that has five volts ground, X and Y, just like the diagram. Again, it looks like there's a lot going on, but it's just simple steps repeated over and over. Just make sure when you plug everything in, you check the labels for the pins on your hardware rather than blindly relying on my diagram. And also, as per this image in the top left of the wiring diagram, joystick A has the flat of the mounting triangle matching the flat of the joystick. Joystick A faces the user, that means joystick C on the other side faces the screen. At this stage, it makes sense to pause with assembly and do the Arduino side while we still have access to the wires. We're going to start by installing the 3D connection software, and if you want to use this with your browser, the extension as well. We're then going to set up Arduino by following these instructions by Nevhead with a couple of small changes. We start by coming to our Arduino installation folder, coming into hardware, 
Arduino and copying the AVR folder. And then wherever your Arduino sketches are stored, most likely in documents, you're going to create a folder called Space Mouse and inside that, paste the AVR folder. Inside there, we'll come to the file called boards.txt. We'll then copy everything from the GitHub instructions, replace the contents of the original file by pasting it in, and then make a couple of changes. We'll set the name to Space Mouse up the top, as well as down the bottom, and then the VID and PID to the values JFADOR specified, and these are listed in my Arduino sketch. When we restart Arduino, we can come up to Tools, and we should have Arduino AVR boards, but in Sketchbook, and from there we can select Space Mouse. We can now plug in the board and select our COM port. As we're starting, we want to scroll down and set the debug value to 1, and then after that we can click Upload. When the upload is done, hopefully the 3D connection software will detect a Space Mouse Pro wireless. After that, we're going to come back to Arduino, go up to Tools and select Serial Monitor. In the console down the bottom, we'll now have a readout of the raw values as being measured by the four joysticks. What you want to do now is test each of them one by one and make sure that values are changing for each. You'll notice for mine that the D joystick has values of 0, 0 no matter what I do. I used a multimeter to confirm that the D joystick wasn't getting 5 volts, and you can see as I wriggle the red wire, the values come in and out, indicating a bad wire which I recrimped. And after that, the debugging output confirmed the joystick was now working. For each one, when you push up on the joystick, you're aiming for the X value to get bigger, and for it to go to 0 when you push down. With that test passed, we'll change the debug to level 2, and re-upload the sketch. What we're looking for is written in the comments of the sketch, and that's for the values to go from positive to negative 500 with some jitter when left at idle. Let's change to debug level 3 and re-upload. This will look much the same, but the dead zone filter will be in place, so the values should be locked at 0 when we're not touching the joysticks. Finally, let's change to debug level 4 and upload again. This time, we're seeing the output after the calculations have taken place, translation for x, y, and z, as well as rotation for x, y, and z. We can simulate moving the mushroom on top by pulling both levers to the side, which should give us a translation value for x. And of course, the opposite push gives the opposite value. We can also simulate tilt by putting one joystick up and the other one down on the opposite side. And we can see here that we now get rotation values for x back and forth. Let's try pushing all of the levers down and then up which should change the translation value for Z. In our CAD, this will control zooming in and out. If our inputs and outputs weren't matching as we would expect, we can set the debug to level five. This will show us levels three and four side by side, the idea being we can see how our inputs are translating to different outputs. Then, if you needed to, you could change which joystick values were referenced for each of the six movements. When all is well, we can change the debug to level zero to turn all of the output off. Please note, there's also some variables if you need to invert the direction of any of the six movements, as well as a speed variable if you want to change the sensitivity. These are global values, and you can use the 3D connection software to change application values as you see fit. Once everything is working, you can upload one final time with debug set to zero. Now we can put the rest together. We'll temporarily unplug everything and insert our dome or mushroom. The two halves come from the top and bottom, and then we use M3 bolts which cut their own thread the first time you insert them. Make sure that everything is moving freely and nothing is getting caught. If you're using the mushroom top, you'll now switch to other people's designs to put the rest together, and if you're building my dome version, we'll continue with the rest. We're going to take the base, and then take the shroud and place it on top, the arrow facing towards the front and the two trenches aligned. And then on the underside, there's four holes where M3 bolts will once again cut their own thread the first time you insert them. If you're adding the optional LEDs, it's time to peel off the backing and stick them around the inner perimeter of the shroud. It should look something like this when you're done. We're now going to take our wiring loom and there should just be enough room to put the four connectors that go to the joysticks through the gap in the base. If you do them one at a time, the plugs shouldn't get jammed. Eventually, you'll get all four through. We'll now plug them all back in, making sure that the connectors aren't reversed, and also making sure we have A, B, C, and D joysticks correctly identified and matched to the colors. After this comes by far the hardest part. We need to move the wires out of the way, clear of the triangular cutout in the base, and then align the bottom of the shaft with this cutout before inserting our quarter inch tripod bolt to hold the two together. Gently pull any excess wires through and double check to make sure nothing's in the way and that we still have full range of motion. We'll now feed our USB cable through the hole in the base, plug it into the Arduino, as well as the rest of the connections to the joysticks, 
and this was the part where my loom being too long was annoying because we need to move the Arduino into position and then slide the palm rest over the top concealing all of the wires. Once it's in place we take our final four M3 bolts and once again cut the thread the first time we insert them. To finish we'll pull through any excess USB cord and then push it into the trench on the underside and then a highly recommended step putting on some adhesive backed rubber feet to stop the whole thing sliding across your desk. And with that assembly is complete and everything should be working thanks to our earlier debugging. Let's close this video with an evaluation and the obvious thing for me is that I wish I had different color LEDs but white was what I had on hand. Maybe I'll design and print a shroud to tint and diffuse them. Overall this absolutely works as advertised and while I do need some practice to get used to it I'm able to manipulate the object and move the camera around on the screen. The elephant in the room is how big my dome version ended up being. It's still ergonomic for the most part, but the most uncomfortable movement is when I want to tilt forward to rotate around the x-axis. During those times, I have a tendency to lift my arm off to get the desired angle. Operation is analog, so I think I could design everything smaller, decreasing the range of motion, but then increasing the sensitivity to compensate. With this joystick core, we'll only ever get this mechanism so small, but the closer we can get to the size of the original design, the better. The journey on this project at times was really hard, but that makes it all the more satisfying to arrive at the destination with everything now working. Is this version perfect? Absolutely not, but you can make it for only $20 worth of parts and it is a fun project. Another thing I really like is that this is a proper community effort and I'm excited and proud to share my contribution for others to try. Let me know in the comments if you're going to give this one a go. Thanks to everyone who collaborated on this project. Thank you for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. Now that we're done, please go do that survey. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.